Okay, so, um, Pastor, I have a question for you. And this question is coming from experience, actually. There are so many um, young people who are in a relationship, and they have... Oh, you guys are not interested in that kind of question. Okay, I'm sure you are. Okay, so, the question here is, what is your take on distance relationship? Calm down. You guys should calm down. I should say... Okay, the question is, what is your take on distance relationship? And we are only long distance relationship. And we're only meeting on our wedding week for the first time. <laughs> gang, gang. Praise God. I my advice or my thoughts, all the scriptures. All of them. Okay, I, I, I sincerely believe that one should not get himself involved or herself involved in things that are crazy. Um, there, is, there, is, there is long distance. There is no distance. The one you are talking about is no, no distance, right? Because you have not seen each other. You have not spoken before. You speak on phones, right? So what if the person comes and is paralyzed? Um, but love can come. What if? And so that day, it's, it's, it's just wrong. I don't want to spend so much time answering some questions, but you are meeting the person on the first day. I think it is wrong. I, I think there's no space and no place in scriptures for it. The only place you'll find a reference that is close to that was when they went, the servant of Abraham went to look for Isaac. And you must understand that their culture was different. At that time, the family makes arrangement for marriage. I'm sure none of us will expect your dad to make arrangement for marriage for you. Like your dad comes in and says, Ah, see my towel. Very from a very good home. Uh, that's your wife. Uh, you will change it. If I, you think he's joking, right? So um, I think that on the wedding day, there's a lot of questions that you want to ask. Who is this guy? Where does he work? Can I trust him? Uh, do I even know him? So I, I think it's very important that we understand those things. And um, I think that's very clear. All right. Thank you so much, PFA. Um, we have another question. This, this came from somebody online. Um, he or she says, do you agree that the Christian position to love everyone includes loving homosexuals and letting them live and marry if they will while we keep preaching to them in love? Absolutely. The answer is absolutely. Um, I think we need to understand that God asks us to love. And he did not define who to love. If the question were to be, should a Christian marry, be involved in an homosexual relationship, I think the answer would be very different. But the answer today for that question is, should I love them? I think you should love them. It doesn't mean they can be best of friends with you. That depends on who you are and what you can take and the amount of consecration you have. Like some of us will just get irritated. I, I don't hate you, but I will be irritated at some mannerism. I, do I have real people here when some guys just look at you and you see their manager and wondering, uh, so it's okay for me to say I like woman, right? Is it okay for me to say that? I like woman and it's evidence. I married one, praise God. Uh -huh. So, I, I, so I, when you start doing like that around me, and you'll find a lot of, a few of them around here in Lagos, right? And the mannerism, all of that. Uh, I, I, I don't hate them, but I see them, talk with them. But when you start wanting to hug me, I, I'm kind of... Uh, uh, so that tells you the kind of relationship we can have. Uh, we can't really be best of friends. You can't say, I didn't see you today, I didn't sleep. Where is that starting from? Do you understand? <laughs> but but should, I, should I then love you? Yeah, I'm, am I going to curse you? I, I think we, we must say this, that believers have also gotten to a point where we need to stand for the truth. The truth is what the Bible says right that's very important but god did not also call us as the cia of the world so you ain't supposed to go uh, around and then start throwing stones at them or killing them or stuff, stuff like that that's what jesus that was not what jesus would have done right and i think that's very important but if you say what's the biblical perspective god made adam and Eve, not adam and steve praise god and uh, i think that's clear enough praise the lord <laughs> praise the lord Okay, still on the subject of distance sir, and relationship. Um, we will not take TRB. 
Can you serve pastor, please? I'm not fasting. I'm just saying, no, no, continue. Okay, okay, great. They should not just let it finish. Oh, please. Mary and Martha. No, no, I can't take Mary, it. We can't don't take worry. it. But don't let it finish. Don't let it finish. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so praise the Lord. Now, as a married Christian woman, hmm, as a married Christian woman, is using sex toys bad? Did ring my husband approve? Of it and has been away from the country for four years now. Hallelujah. <laughs> now the, the, the answer was the answer was easy. The answer was easy. Was mm-hmm. until it became hard. <laughs> and I'll tell you why it became hard. Um, Number one, my husband approve of it. Number two, uh, he's not out, he's not around Nigeria. He's not around here. For the first, so the question is, should a Christian use sex toy? The answer is no. It's a part of ponia. You see, the Greek word for pornography, fornication, adultery, that you find in scriptures, every time the Bible uses the word fornication, the Greek word you find there is the word ponia, which is where you get the word porn from which means that anything that has, um, has the ability to stimulate you sexually, apart from the approved means, is what is called ponia, which is where you get all kinds of perversion from. So when people tell me, uh, you know, bestiality is not even in scriptures, it's not bad. It's captured in that word ponia, right? Uh, masturbation is captured in that word ponia, right? So that what the person does is self-stimulation. Uh, and I, 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 I will tell you that um, the answer to that is no, according to scriptures. Uh, especially for those who are not married. So I have to be careful in answering this question. Aha. Uh-huh. All right. So if you are married, the answer is no. If you are married and your husband gives you permission. I've always believed that whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Um, and whatever happens in a marriage bed, it is their business. Right? It is not my business. All right? Um, so people have conversation around uh, styles around Kenekon. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, I, don't, I don't believe Christians should be involved in that. If you are your husband and your wife, or don't do anything harmful, right? There are nothing to test here. Uh, chain me up. You know, it's, perversion is crazy now. <laughs> chain me up and start doing stuff. Uh, you know what I'm saying. You've watched movies. <laughs> <laughs> it's single Pringle, right? <laughs> single to these bones. Or I, I, you cannot read. Do you remember this movie? Fifty Shades of. We, we, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, you are wondering. So, so you know, I did not say anything. I said, "Do you remember this?" And the person that said he does not know mentioned it. So you see, it, it, there's a way to get people in church. I want real conversations and Christian conversations. So you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes, sir. Beautiful. You know it does not mean you've done it. But I think it's very important we understand that the Bible says the marriage bed must be kept pure and undefiled. All mongers and adulterers, scripture says God will judge. I think it's important we understand that there is nothing called stimulation except you have paid the price for stimulation. And the price for stimulation is for you to put a ring on it. Right? Uh, if you have not put a ring on it and you have not taken somebody in as husband and wife, then there are things you should not get into. Not because it is bad for you, but because God has proposed it that way that until marriage comes, uh, sex is not permitted. Right? For somebody whose husband, therefore, is not in Nigeria, uh, if I travel and for four years and um, you are saying, will my wife, no, we will not do that. I will never approve to that. But then we are also very different people uh, so <laughs> I, 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 I think that um, I would advise that the person goes and see the husband <laughs> if the body cannot take it anymore I, I would advise that uh, because sometimes again we also do not know when to stop yes sir and so uh, wisdom is profitable <laughs> thank you PFV <laughs> A round of applause for All people. Right. I didn't see that. <laughs> All right. So I'll take just one more question online, then we'll go to the audience. All right. So this question says, um, why does the Old Testament God 
seems so different than the New Testament God. Also, Ale Hallelujah. Now, so I, I know what the person has been listening to. Uh, there, is a, there are certain doctrines that is called the Osas Doctrine, uh, which teaches that the Old Testament God is more terrible. The Old Testament God is very reprimanding, is holy, and is vengeful. So that if you do anything terrible, it just kills you. Uh, it strikes people down. It destroys Egypt. It's not fair. But the God of the New Testament is a God of grace. Nothing you do, uh, even is a lovey dovey God. Praise God. And so, even if I sin, I don't even have to ask for forgiveness because all my future and past and present sins are all taken care of in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. But in that doctrine, it's, again, is the error in the doctrine. Because we would not have known who Jesus is without the Old Testament. Without the prophecies of the Old Testament, the New Testament is not real because it has nothing to be built upon. The New Testament, therefore, becomes the reality of the shadow of the Old Testament. Now, what they have gotten wrong is a concept in dispensational studies in theology that we call the study of dispensation. And what is dispensation? It is how a God decides to manage his own household. So in the Old Testament, the God of the Bible decided first and foremost, I'm going to create a people and they are going to live by themselves. So there was nothing. So he put Adam in the garden. He didn't see anything. No rules, nothing. Just a choice. Do not take of the tree of the garden. And then the day came, they sinned. And then they took of it. And then the Lord said again, uh, what you call, so the, what you first want is what you call the human conscience. And then what happened after that is the dispensation of human government. At that time, after Noah had died, after the whole world had been destroyed, Noah had come back. God said, by man you shall die if you kill a man. So who's supposed to kill you after you kill a man? Another man. That's government. So God instituted what is called government. Still same God. And then after a while, you have what you call the Mosaic law, which is what they now call the dispensation of law, which is that God now gave Moses a law and told his people, this is how I really want to lead my people. That's what God decided. That's what God said. And so there was the Ten Commandments, bigger than the Ten Commandments. You all know the Ten Commandments. But there were also the customs. There were the laws and the traditions, how you are supposed to behave in the church, in the temple, how you are supposed to appear before God in the temple, the sacrifice law and all of that. But we know the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal, do not take what is not your own, do not sleep with, la, 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 the Ten Commandments. Now, understand that after that time, even in those periods, God knew that what he was preaching was a shadow because the real was coming. In the moment Adam sinned, the same God, and that's why there's a problem with that doctrine, because the same God said, there's going to come a seed of the woman. He didn't say the seeds of the woman. If he had said the seed, he would have said humanity. But he prophesied concerning one seed. So even in that sin was the seed planted that another person was coming. After that time again, you looked again, and then you saw many things. Now let's go back to Jesus himself, who they want to preach, and say that the God of this New Testament is Jesus. He referred to the God of Abraham as his Lord and Father in scriptures. So that there are no two gods. There is only one God who decides how he's going to lead his people. I can come to my house and you can say, I can say in the morning, we are only going to eat fried rice. That's it. If you don't like it, you leave. It's my law. It's my household. If I now decide, okay, 2024, and I say no more fried rice, it's pap you'll be taking. Now, if you don't like it, you can leave. But it's my house. But it doesn't mean that I have changed or that I am two persons. I decide how I rule. God decides how he chooses and rules his people. Also do not forget that the law was only to a people. It was not to the whole of the world. The law was only to the Jewish people. It was to the Jewish people. And after that, he now said and made a command and said, Listen, through Abraham, the whole nations of the world shall be called blessed. Now, how will that fruitfulness come to pass? He sent the gift of Christ. Now, if anyone who believes will believe in that person of the name of Jesus, you can all be saved. So that in Christ, there is no Gentile. There is no longer Jew. We are all one and the same in Christ Jesus. So it is not two different gods. It is the same God who decides how we live. Now, do not forget that even our definition of law. So we said he's not the God of love. Deuteronomy chapter 7, and then verse 7. 
The Bible records as it concerns this same God. The Bible says, why is it that the Lord loved Israel? That was a question. Why is it that the Lord chose Israel? And the Bible gave the answer. He said he chose them, not because they were the most numerous of the people. He said, but the Lord chose them because he loved them. Now, how does that make sense? Why is it that the Lord loved them? The Bible now refers to you again and says he chose them because he loved them. So the only answer to that is love. This is still the God they call vengeful. And it's still the same God that says, I will love you with an everlasting love. That's also in your Old Testament. The same God. But you know, the God that has the law, we want a people who do not, we want to be lawless. So I want to preach what people like. And they just say, you know, you can't sleep with anybody. Doesn't mean you're going to, anything's going to happen to you. And I understand that we have been made the righteousness of God even in Christ Jesus. But please let me say this important truth to us. That there is that which is called righteousness, which is you becoming what Christ has given you. But it's something called holiness. As scripture says, without holiness, no one can see the law. Righteousness is inside. Holiness is on the outside. Do you understand that? So I can be right, not because of what I did, but because I believe in Christ. That's what makes me right. Because I became the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus 5.21, 1 Corinthians. Right? So I have become that righteousness. But that does not mean that I should not live right. Right living is important and it is only based on right believing. I believe in Christ. Now I've been given and imparted with the gift of righteousness. But it's expected that I go from here and live right. And that is scriptures for you. But there are no two gods. If the God of the new is a new God, what is his beginning and where did he come from? John said, I will not have known that he is the Christ, except that he that sent me said upon him that the spirit rest. That's who I will know. And John served the God, even of the Jewish people. So what is the beginning of that God, if that God is different from the God of the old? But let me say this to you. This is not a new doctrine. This doctrine has been from church history in the, two, in the 400, 500 AD after Christ. It started by a man called Motanist. No, sorry, that's... Mazio. When you get home, you can Google Mazio. This law is actually from Mazionism. Mazionism believe that the God of the old is different from the God of the new. And they sent him out of the church. And he started preaching that. Now listen, so that what of the errors you see today are not new. They have always been. That's why I'm asking you, go and search Mazionism out. And you find out. In Mazionism, like those who preach this doctrine also, they will tell you that the book of Hebrew, they don't accept it. So what did Mazion did? Mazion had his own canonized Bible. And in his own Bible, he removed the book of Hebrew. Because in Hebrew, the Bible talks about sin. So he didn't believe in that. So he removed it. He removed all the letters of Peter. Because he believed that talked about holiness. That's not the God of the New. So he only had, the, he had only the book of Luke as the New Testament. So Matthew, Mark, taken away. And if you see these people also preach today, you will hear them say, uh, one of the things they say is that they tell you that 1 John is not written to Christians. Is written to Gnostics. No, so don't get into those errors. We know what they are, where they come from. But that's, mm. that's just what it is. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Do you understand the thing I said? Yes. 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 That's too detailed. All right. All right. Thank you so much, PFA. Um, let's go to the audience. Um, does anyone have a question? Please, ushers, go around with a microphone. If you have a question, please just signify. Or you can write it and pass it forward. Anybody with a question? All right. Okay. There was one written. Okay. Please give her the mic. You can see it. It's fine. It's fine. That's it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, over time, when I see young people in relationship, there's this thing that bothers me. We all um, read the Bible and understand the fact that the, the bed has to be on the fault. And when I say certain things, I feel like I'm the weird person. Like, there has to be no sexual relationship. There, there's a particular uh, case of cohabiting. He happened uh, among uh, a Christian sister and a brother. And I wondered if I had a different Holy Spirit because they pray. Yes, no, I'm bothered. They pray. And their life is okay. Okay. <laughs> no, 
seriously. How are they cohabiting and they are praying and their lives is going on well? And I'm saying something and I'm feeling like, guy, you are not cohabiting and some things are not straight and somebody is there doing something and they are fine. It's, it's, it's weird. Like people kiss, people romance, people have sex and they have good relationships. To somebody who do not do anything, I, I'm just there. single. Okay, so I, 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 what's your question? The question is, why do people cohabit and their life are okay? And somebody is not cohabiting and it's not okay. Why? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Um. Are we good? Yes, sir. No, no, no. I, I, I was... Okay, Ellie, come and answer the question. Ellie, come, come and answer. answer the question. Come and answer. You are so question. passionate about it. Come. Come on. <laughs> All right. So I, I think it's important we understand. I like I've always said that the devil will be a bad devil if he cannot do three things. Number one, if he cannot give money, if he cannot give power, and then if he cannot give fame. Consider it. Those three things. If the devil does not have that, do you think anybody will follow him? That's why he has the greatest recruiting agency in the world today. Because we all want power. People want a taste of fame. And they will go all the way for it. Now let me say this to you. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. There's absolutely something wrong with their conscience. And let me say this about conscience that you can kill your conscience. First time you make out, um, your conscience will go crazy. Go overboard. Like, what have I done? Even if you want to pray, it might take you five, six days to get back to that place again. And people have thought now that it does not matter. God has forgiven your sins. Just continue. Now, that's why that first question, you now see where it came from. That's why a lot of people are looking for those who will tell them what they should do because they know that there are spirits inside of them. So, when the Holy Spirit tells you now that what you're doing is wrong, which is the voice of your conscience, now, you will listen to a someone that tells you, you are just being religious. There's nothing bad about it. God cannot be condemning you. Now, can I say to believers that God does not condemn you? But the Holy Spirit's voice inside of you is your conscience. You can't trust the conscience of an unbeliever, but you can trust the conscience of a believer. Because his conscience is the voice of his human spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your feeling is the voice of your flesh. I feel I want to do something. Now. I feel That's the voice of your flesh. And reasoning is the voice of your mind. Right? So that when my conscience tells me what I've done is wrong, it's okay to listen to my conscience. It's okay to say this is wrong. Now, let me now talk to you about what people called the searing of the conscience, which is the deadening of the deadness of the conscience. Is that after you've made that the first time, if the second day you came again and that beautiful lady came and you did it again, the voice will reduce. It won't be as high. As it used to be. What is going on is that you are searing the conscience. It's like you deaden the vein in a place. So that the pain is not felt anymore. What you will find out is that some of those people who you say cohabitate. Even go online and abuse other believers. And say people are not righteous. And they are stealing money in this nation. They are stealing. And you are wondering. Ah, but you are having sex on the regular. And you are saying people are stealing. All of you are just. But because what you do. You don't think it is wrong. You see others, and that's why Jesus said, "Remove first the speck in your own." The, so, the log. So your own is log. So remove your log, and then you can remove the speck in somebody else. I think it is terrible, and we have got into a place where we are very comfortable with cohabitation. Very comfortable. Some people will tell you it makes sense. I mean, Lagos accommodation is expensive. How can I be looking for one million? I'm still going to marry this girl. I've already. If I have given her a ring, so why is she paying 400 and I'm struggling to pay 300 We'll come together, we'll get a house of 600K, and we are just living together. And I swear we will not even have sex. I swear we will not have sex. I mean, that's why we are taking a two-bedroom flat. So she will have her room, I have my own room. And I'm not joking. I, I, let me say this to you. People begin with that proper mindset, and it is only mindset. They started like that. They wanted to do right. But please, scripture says, do not tempt yourself. God does not tempt anybody. But if you really like that girl, 
you should actually have some feelings for her. So when you see her uncladded in the morning, it does not affect you because you are on fire for the Lord. And the devil wants you to feel good also. So the devil leaves you. I mean, if I, you just listen to some, hey, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. And so the devil leaves you, and so you feel like, she better told them, it's two months now. But suddenly, you begin to loosen your guard. And as you do that, one day you watch a movie, and then you are tired, or she's tired. She just decided to lie down. I mean, you are dating, you are going to marry. So it's okay to lie down on your thigh. Amen. Amen. And, <laughs> and it was from there you decided that, what happened? Let me remove this thing in your hair. And as you did that, something vibrated. But, and, and you see, as you continue, you did not want to do that. That's why when people say somebody got pregnant, let me say this, when people get pregnant in church, I love them. You know why? Because those kind of people, it's actually maybe first or second time. You see, the real people who got pregnant, they prepare for the journey. So that when they have sex, they are prepared, they are protected. But these other ones, and that's why they can't even remove it. Because this other one on the regular. Do you know what I'm saying? So you don't tempt yourself too much. If you love a girl or a lady, don't let me use the word girl, or even a man, the guy just come back from the gym and you just finish that movie. And then, unfortunately, there's a reels you are watching. And then you say, ah. And then you looked, he looked at you and you locked eyes, drooling, drooling. And then something happened. You know, I said, I didn't know. No, you did not know, Bawo. You knew when you lived together. I tell people, you better stay and leave Lagos. If Lagos will destroy you. It's not. And then let me say this to you. Everybody will say we don't have a choice. That's why we stay together. They are liars. They are liars. They are liars. Because you have friends. You have other people. If that girl dies, you are going to move on. Stop behaving like she's the only one you can live with. So cohabitation is no. But let me say this to you. Be good with your Jesus. There are people who sleep around. Because you don't sleep around doesn't mean there's not anything wrong with you. I think people will say, I don't have a boyfriend, I don't have a girlfriend. Okay. My wife, when she was in school, she used to say that she didn't have any boyfriend. And it was a matter to her. And like some of you now, it's a matter to you. It was a matter to her. It's important. I mean, and then she started asking questions, is something wrong with me, and all of that. But you know that some of us, if the Lord will give you to some people like, to people like us, he will preserve you. Uh, you understand? Word. Amen. It's not pride. It is just the way it is. Amen. Uh -huh. So he had preserved her for the day of the coming of the man of God. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? So that they did not see her because they can't see her. But when I came in, I saw her. There was a scene. There was a sign. <laughs> now, listen to this. We got married. And one of our best friends who had people all around her. You know, why you feel that way is that you always have people all around you that always have guys talking to them and you're wondering, kill your shit. And four years down the road, I'm asking, that girl, is she married now? No marriage. Listen, your time will come. And the one that will come will stay with you. Yeah. And that you are not having sex does not mean anything is wrong with you. They are the ones something is wrong with. Because some of them have even lost body count. If you don't know what that means, just forget about it. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? But I'm just trying to say to you that, listen, don't compare yourself. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, PFA. All right, so we have a question from the audience. It says, doing full-time ministry has to be an act of faith. How did you completely surrender? <laughs> Alan, Pastor Yanopaja Branch. I, 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 I think the first thing to understand is that you can't follow God and follow the things of this world. I was not thinking of whether I would have a car. I was not thinking of the clothes I would wear. I wasn't thinking about those things. I just wanted to do the will of God. And if I have a chance to do it again, I'll do it again. 
And when you people tell me, that takes a lot of faith. Now, you don't even need a lot of faith. You just need to do it. Do it afraid. Do it crying. Do it doubt. Just do it. Peter, come on water. Peter stepped on water. Did he sink? He sank. But did he die inside the river? No. Jesus stretched forth his hand. There are times in full-time ministry, you will also sink, but he will stretch forth his hand. That's why it's called the merciful one. Right? But the most important thing is that if fear makes you stagnant, nothing will happen. I stepped in without even thinking about anything. I, I wasn't thinking. Of, uh, you know why people don't do it now? Who will marry me? Who will do this? Where will I live? Uh, all of those things. The Bible says Jesus will take care of you. Uh, you know, I read the story of the Levites. Scripture says that they should give everybody an inheritance in Israel. But they should not give the Levite, everyone from the tribe of Levi, anything. Because God said, I am their inheritance. So, I knew that people may have good jobs. They may work in the big four, right? They may work in the big seven. But things will happen in their life that they are coming to me, Levi. You know why? Because God is my inheritance. My inheritance is not salary. God is. And that means it's inexhaustible. You know, the thing about faith is that faith is not just your confession. Faith is not just your believing. Faith basically, and this is why we got this wrong, is about acting. It's about doing it. If you believe it, do it. If you believe God said it, do it. If you believe God said, get married, get married. If you are saying, you know what, children must be like 100 million, I must have 200 million in my account, you will never get married, right? Get married and then you will see that the accounts will open up. The next phase will come up. But we want to have all the pictures. I'm not interested in having all the pictures. But I know him who have the pictures. I know him who have the pictures. And if I know him, I'll follow him. Let me now say this to you. Faith is not automatic. Faith isn't incidental. Faith cannot come by laying on of hands. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Like Reverend George would say, faith comes by hearing until your ear begins to ring of the word of God. If there is a ringing in your ear that brings doubt, it's not a problem. It's a, it's a diagnostic telling you there is a deficiency. There is a faith deficiency. Listen, fear is not the problem. Fear only tells me something is wrong. I need to work on something. And anytime I begin to be afraid as it concerns money, begin to be afraid concerning my future, what I need is some faith dose. He's telling me I am lacking in certain areas and I'm going to do something about it. The reason many believers don't have faith, and I know many of us, we love messages on relationship. You can listen to 100 million messages on relationship. And now you are now asking yourself, why are you even afraid of marriage itself? It's because those messages have killed you. Because they have told you 100 million things. Those who are preaching it, how many they hear it before they got married? Are you following what I'm saying? What they really had and the beginning of their foundation was that they had word as a concerning believing in God. Can I ask you, how many books have you read on faith? How many sermons that are on faith that is not on mystery? The ancient mystery of the supernatural. How to command angels. Commanding the supernatural. That's what you want to hear. But if somebody says the tenses of faith... The basics of faith. How faith works. What is faith? <laughs> what is simple? What is faith? Because you see, we are big, very complicated people. If I get you when I'm complex, when I sound so big, instead of me to say angel, I say the divine beings. Instead of me to say door, I say porter. <laughs> so you are taking here. Instead of me to say heaven, I say realms. Instead of me to refer to God, I say the ancient one. Immortal. And instead of me saying angels are here, and I say the immortals just step in. She mark over. <laughs> Why? Because what is mysterious is attractive, but it doesn't mean it do it does you any good. Those who preach these sermons did not start out like that, and they are doing your generation a lot of injustice by preaching that sermon to you because that is not how they began their faith work. They began their faith work by listening to how to study the Bible. They began their faith work by listening to understanding how faith works. 
principles on finances. That's how they began their journey. But look at you. See how you have started. You got born again yesterday, last year. Your friend sent you a message. It's on mysteries of angels. It's on. So you don't even understand the basics of Christian faith, yet you want to command angels. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So you see what your problem is? That's why when you speak in church and you tell brothers who are old to go and get married, they don't listen to you. You know why? Yeah. They are there. You know why? They don't have one faith like this. And let me say this to you. Let me say this to you about faith. Habakkuk chapter 2 and then verse 4. Um, Hebrews 10, 38. Galatians 3 and then verse 11. The Bible says, Now the just shall live by faith. Faith is not to receive. Faith is to live by. And I will assure you this, and I'm not cursing you. In your journey in life, you will get to a situation that only faith will be able to solve. Money will not solve it. Connection will not solve it. IVF will not solve it. It's not cost. There's nothing you do. Only faith will solve it. I will tell you now, all this premature thing you are doing, your faith is on ICU. All these things you are doing, work on your faith now when you don't have to. Do you understand what I'm saying? When they say, do you believe God? You have simple headache. Parastamon, Parastamon. The day they give you a doctor's report, like they gave me, and it tells you you can't do what you know God has called you to do anymore because of the report. If you do not have faith at that time, they will bury you and your generation will cry, and that's the end of it. But if you have faith, you can move mountains. If you have faith, nothing can be impossible to them that have faith. Do you understand what we're saying? Whosoever shall see unto this mountain, be ye moved and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have those things which he says. See, therefore means that if you can speak, you can call it forth. The foundations of the earth were created because God said, let there be light. What have you called forth? That struggle in your place of work is because you are not speaking. Even if you speak, you don't have faith. Because you don't believe what you are saying. You see the problem now? Huh? It's not, you see, we don't have a devil problem. We have an ignorance problem. Praise God. Hallelujah. A round of applause for PFA, please. Okay, so we have a question from the audience. Uh, give him the mic so he can ask. Thank you very much. Um, I have a technical question for Pastor. <laughs> All right, so the question is, um, as a married woman, your husband, your husband doesn't have a car. The woman too doesn't have a car. Is it right for the woman to receive the car from a male friend? <laughs> a big car. Praise God. You know, I, I've always believed that one size does not fit all for those kind of questions. Wisdom then is profitable. It depends on the nature of the friendship between the wives, uh, between the friend of the wife and the, the, the wife and the friend. And it depends on how much of them you know, um, right? Um, so, for instance, uh, my friend and my brother is in the house. Um, Adeba Mishai is here. And um, you see, I am sure, and I know him well, if his wife brings a car now, and he knows the friend well, next week is the one you will see driving the car. You see, you see it, also be, it also depends on the kind of woman you marry. If somebody sees my wife, for instance, and decides, I know one person is very close to, she's quite close to the guy. If that guy decides to buy a car, Lexus, for instance, <laughs> what will eventually happen is that I will give her the, I will take the, she'll begin to drive the Honda and I'll begin to drive the Lexus. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you that I have no, I have zero, because I know that it's just investment that's going to waste. <laughs> so it depends on how much you trust your woman. And that's why I tell people, if you marry her from the gutter, you are going, it's not going to be that you are going to, you are going to always have gutter mindset. Hey, she has gone again, she has gone again, like a pig, she has gone again. Ha, Aloro, they are, they are okay. what do you know they have done? Oh God. <laughs> I have never, this is the ninth year of marriage, I've never checked that phone. Never. 
now. Now that's big. It's major. Look at you, girlfriend, two months. You are collecting for. You are not clapping. You should. Uh, it's major. <laughs> Why? Because you don't trust him. You don't trust that. My dad taught us when we were growing up never marry someone you do not trust. He said, trust is the foundation of love. You see, there is no love without trust. If you can't trust a person, I don't care whether you had heaven, heaven spoke, and heaven touched the heart. Don't do it. Let the heart go back to where it came from. Just leave it. You see, because all these things will cause you hypertension, high blood pressure, where are you coming from? I know a lady that went out. She went out to the mall. True life story. The husband said the Holy Spirit told her that she was coming from a man's house. You know, they will use the Holy Spirit to even lie. The Holy Spirit told me. And how did the Holy Spirit leave me and go and talk to you? It's not an old for phone now. What, what's the Holy Spirit doing like that for? Uh, but the gist is that there was no trust and there is no trust. You understand what I'm saying? So for the people who are trekking and they have been believing God, confessing, somebody now brought a car. By God, I will ask the man the question, did you give us the car? If he says yes, are you sure? He said yes. If I'm not even very comfortable, I will take it. I will call. I know people now, even in this church. Baba, go trade this car for me. Exchange. I might even buy a lesser one and collect the change and give my wife again. But change iPhone is a problem. Do you know what I'm saying? I have zero. So that's why I said it depends on who you marry. So again, if you are not married, you have a choice to make here. Yeah. Because let me say this to you. The question might be technical because it speaks concerning um, a car. What if it was a better job? Or she wants to employ him. Do you understand that? I didn't say he wants to employ her. She wants to employ him as a, as a personal assistant. He's working, he's working in MTN call center, 100,000. And he's saying, this is, um, you know my office now. I need somebody like you. There are things like, I'm not very good with organization. I'm just creative. And you say, and you know they are very close. When they all say, you are not very comfortable. He now wants to give her 700K, 700K per month. And you are now saying, no, you can't go. If you trust him, you will drive him there. But if you don't trust him, he's not going to go and poverty will kill you people. Can you see what I'm saying? So if you don't trust the person, don't do it. Just what I'm saying. But if it is me, I ask my if I'm not here, this name answer. Oh, she, she can't even get home. She bring the car. She drives so I mean, I mean we are be every time our faith is active. Active. Right? Somebody parked. Somebody parked yesterday in front of our house. Parked very well. I was upstairs. I came down. I said, have they brought it? <laughs> they say, I say, well, I say, it's not in our house. That, ah, why did you park like this? <laughs> Very active. I'm believing God for car. Believe, every time I'm believing God for. So he won't come. I'll be shocked. No. When he comes, I am thankful. <laughs> I'm not surprised. My faith is always active. Active. Not all, your faith is not doing anything. Your faith, that's, your faith is tired. Look at Tony now. He's not going to gym for a while. He's, he used to be like this. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Because the, it's not working. <laughs> The faith is dead. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Your faith is dead. You believe God. You are everything. How much do you have in account? How much do you have in account? You want to marry? How much do you have in account? Let's begin to save. Uh, in Nigeria, when they change government, you see it always gets worse. You see, if you don't get married now, <laughs> no boo. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A round of applause for Pastor, please. Hallelujah. Okay, before I ask this question from the audience, we have somebody here that has a question. Can we give him the mic? Okay, praise the Lord. I don't know how to put it, but um, I trust the Holy Spirit will help me. We live in a world where, shall I say, Christianity has been bastardized. Let me put it like that. And um, our so-called Christian brothers and sisters in our secular space of work, and um, shall I say generally now, even in the church, um, the way we live our lives is not based on the scriptures. And um, if you try, not even trying now, 
if you that are living that kind of life you tend to communicate the scripture you tend to relate in terms of scripture they start tagging as a pastor and um, I want to ask this question what has happened to the church when we gather and you check people's phones, secular music, the next thing, ringing in their head. And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> is there something different about me? Like, what is wrong? You know, I had a conversation with a, with a lady and she was like, I know if I ask you, you, say, you start saying the Bible. I was like, what do you expect me to say? I don't know. So, we live in a world where it's, it's so contaminated. Like it, and it's getting bad every now and then. What can we do? In fact, they've given some of us names. Pastor, Pastor. And I'm like, I don't have to. I'm a child of God. So also, are you a child of God? So what is wrong with the church? Like, what is wrong with us? At this stage, you still have to tell some believers. I know that some of us are still here. I'm not trying to judge. We still have some, some beliefs, strange beliefs. My opinion, your opinion. And if you choose to, if they ask you about your own opinion, you refer to the scripture, they start sensing that you have a call of God upon your life. So what is wrong? All right. And what can we do? All right. Um, I, I, th I think it has come to time where we don't, number one, we don't believe people are Christians because they go to church. Church has become like a social gathering. It's a point of connection. When I came to Lagos, I, I was telling somebody, I watch church there thing. He said, ah, that church now, <laughs> that's where all the big guys are. That's where I'll meet them. That kind of person. Do you think that's a good way of going to church? That, that's networking. That's a social network ground. Number two, you should also not talk, call people Christians because they speak Christianese. It is where. Uh, my friend, my, my wife has a, a colleague who speaks more Christian lingo than us and is a Muslim. Pastor, it is well. I'm wondering. Uh, grace. We shall need grace. If we can find grace now, God will help us. And I'm wondering. Uh, uh, and I'm wondering. Uh, why are you using. I mean, you can't find Ori of in the Quran. So, what is the problem? They have stayed so long. People have stayed so long in the Christian faith. And we are not asking them to make decisions anymore. We are only wanting them to come to church. We are only comfortable with them, with the church being full. That we are not asking ourselves some sincere questions. And until that happens, I will say this. Because, you see, like I've always maintained, God has not called me to be the CIA of the church. Um, I'm only called to pastor a people and ensure that those people stand for Christ. That's it. But I'll say this. That it is also possible for us as lights to complain about darkness. But we can't. Because when darkness comes and prevails, it's an opportunity for light to shine. So let light shine. Let your light shine so that you may give glory even to God. I'm not sure that the presence of darkness is evil. And about church people who are still like that, I, I tell people that let them come to church. Let them come. One day the word will come and eat them. But if they are far from the church, that means it's evil. they are even far from the word. But one day something will convict them. I've known people in church who came in like strugglers for many months. They are still there. Nothing is changing, fighting with certain sins. And suddenly, you can't explain it. Suddenly, something hits them. And their lifestyle, everything changes. And that's possible because they are under the pillar, the ground of truth, which is the church. And the grace of God is with them. I, I think we need to also understand that in our loving the world, we should also be bold enough to stand with our convictions. This is what the Bible says. Uh, they will accuse us, they will abuse us, but we aren't going to be famous or popular on social media, right? Uh, because there are things that sometimes I want to say. I think about my wife, because she's very conservative. And me, I look like I'm a liberal, but I'm actually very, also very conservative. But the truth is, we need to be a people who stand for the truth. And those of us who know what is the truth, I mean, I don't know when it became a shameful thing to be a virgin. And they have normalized it, that it is normal. It's not, so virgins can't talk. Ah. <clears throat> Your friends are shouting. So you are the ones that are supposed to, because you are the same one there, but they have made you the insane one. 
That's why you can't listen to the definition of the word. You've got to listen to your definition according to scriptures. You understand what I'm saying? So let's stand for what we believe in. And let's just stand for it and pray for the church. Uh, the church, the family, are two institutions that the devil will attack as much as he can. But we must keep praying so that the church can stand. Amen. Amen. And um, please, ushers, take the mic round. There are more questions. So we'll just take more questions from the audience, but we'll have to round up soon. So let's take as much as we can from the audience. Okay, please give mommy the microphone. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, my question is very simple. Why are Christians stingy? Please, let's, let's be asking our question that way. All right. Why are Christians stingy? Number one, because they don't have money. Number two, because they do not understand the divine principles of giving. Um, if you do not give, you will not have. Scripture says, Sis 38, Luke, give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together. Let me say this to us all, that if we understand the principle of seed sowing, we would always give. Many of us are thieves. Right? It's only a farmer who is a thief that did not put seed on the ground. That the time of harvest will now come, he will not carry a basket and go to the farm. So you already know he's going to go and steal somebody else's calf server because he didn't plant anything. Do you understand what I'm saying? Many of us are eating from the graces of our parents. You see, your parents, you say, ah, that man, woman, he can give anything. He has given everything. That's why you have a job now. You don't know. It's a seed that you are eating. Because the Bible says, as far as heaven and earth remain, seed time and harvest shall not seed. But a day will come that you are at Jetan, you have finished all the harvest. You understand what I'm saying? So you now begin to say, ah, God is not good. God is, it's not that God is not good. God, the Bible says he gives seed to the sower and bread for the eater. At his seed, at his bread, you ate everything. At the jetan, you ate everything. There is nothing on the ground. The farmer understands that as he sows the seed, for instance, of yam, and he harvests yam this year, he is keeping some to sow for next year's harvest. Can I ask you, every one of us here, when was the last time, you, people, you know we all talk and say the word is getting more worldly, the word is getting more worldly. When was the last time you paid your tithe? That runs God's agenda. Wait, don't answer yet. When was the last time you paid for a music that was a gospel song? Moses Bliss, that you did not go online and go on. Even when Apple says you should pay, you are not paying. You will go somewhere, see, see Niger, and download. And see, even though Apple made it difficult, you still use court. Enter it. You know what you're doing? How will they get money to do that business? How will they run? We complain so much that, the, 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 you know, you watch Netflix, right? How many of you watch Netflix? If you don't have Netflix, I want to pray for you that you should have one. Okay. Because people have it on their phone now, right? So you have Netflix. Now, how many of you know and you have seen that it is intentional that they infuse some of these LGBT ideas into Netflix? Sometimes... The sin is not even necessary. Not necessary at all. Not the story that you know. Who wrote this kind of story? They will not even show the man again. No, he just comes, kiss the man, and go. And go, that's all. And go. Not in the story like nothing. They just want to plant it in your head that it is normal. So many of us now have normalized it because we have watched too much of Netflix. I mean, it's even possible for you to believe that you should not go to America because everybody in America is... But it's a lie. The population is still very small. But because of what you have watched and seen, and that's how an agenda runs. Do we have Christian agenda? Can you run it? Can you put your money where your mouth is? Someone say, I want to do drama, drama ministry. Can you put, give them money? We have script writers in the church that cannot eat. And some of you have money in your account. Money! You, you watch an influencer, a Christian influencer, you can't even like it. It's macaroni you are looking for. You see what they're saying? That's it! That, you see, we are not running our agenda, yet we are complaining. We are complaining. We just complain about many things. We've got to put our money where it is. And you also have to understand that God pays back. He doesn't owe any man anything. In the first instance, who gave you what you 
have. Let me say this to you. For those who say, those who don't preach tight. If you don't preach tight, do you know that what you are supposed to give is actually more than the tight? Because Jesus gave all. So if I say tight has been taken away, then I will preach all. That means you must give all. At least 70% of your income. Do you think tight is better? They are reloading the tea. Let us be careful. <laughs> Praise God. Cheers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Um, our time is fast spent, so we can take only one more question from the audience and then probably take this question forward. So please. Okay, my question is not a question, question. All right. Please just go ahead. ahead. Okay. Um, I just feel like the latter part of her question was not answered. So she was, she, I'm sorry. So she was asking why it looks like those people, people doing all the things that she said they were doing, why it looks like they're okay. Nothing is wrong with them. Their lives are moving fine. Everything is, apart from sexual sin, every other thing, people doing fraud and stuff. They seem okay, and there are so many Christians. I feel like this is important for believers to hear, to encourage believers, because a lot of Christians are low, and seeing people in the world that are exploring and doing all sorts of things. So why is it so? Praise God. I've yeah. driven a gallant 1987 before. Um, uh, do you know my gallant 1987 mm. edition? Um, and I've driven a Toyota Camry before. The first time I drove a Toyota Camry, after driving the Gallant, I knew that money is good. <laughs> have you ever been into, have you entered, have they ever taken you in a Toyota Land Cruiser before? Those portals are not that bad. They are not, I'm telling you. They are not, they, it's just like cushion, you move and then you bounce and then you go. But have you, have you, have you been privileged to be inside these white buses in Lagos. When you get home, I remember I was telling my wife, drive in Lagos. I can't drive, drive in Lagos. You park two car. You don't drive, leave it alone. She didn't drive. So one day she came back. She said, my leg, I can't feel my leg. Ah. <laughs> she, you, those bus, you stay like this, right? <laughs> and then you stay inside. Have you been inside that place and then you entered a Toyota Prado? Which one is better? No, no, I'm not. It's not a trick question. Which one is better? Have you stayed in a face my face you and now you are privileged to have your own toilet to yourself so that when you want to bathe, you know, people wake up earlier in Lagos, not because they have to, but because the bedroom may be busy. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So uh, some of you don't know what it is. Praise God for your life. But people wake up like three o'clock because the bathroom will be busy. So you get what I'm saying? Now, now you have your own. Which one is better? Your own is better. Let me say this to you. The world will always do better than us. Be comfortable with that. That is why we are not called to this world. We are called to heaven. When you see a Yahoo boy with a Bentley, don't be saying, I won't be that pastor that will preach you that. What God, you have your own Bentley. Shut up. What do you need it for? That's the truth. We need to understand we can't have the same values with these guys. We can't have the same values with them. You can't have your own body count as the way of success. That I slept with like 20 girls even last one month. And then it feels good. You now want as a believer to be able to say that also. Something is wrong with you. You are not born again. You know what I'm saying? Somebody has 20 million in their account. In as much as, that's why Paul said, having food and raiment, we must rejoice. I'm not asking you that is it good to be poor. But I'm saying that God has promised us that the latter end should be greater than that means the path of the righteous is like a shining light. It shines more and more onto the perfect day. It may not be as bright as that of the fraud star. God did not call you to 20 GLX or 5 GLX. Excuse me. You have joy. He doesn't have joy with his GLX. Listen, let, let's, let's start talking about Christian values that we are called into. We are called... I, I know you want to take the human hair. And that human hair, just one strand like this is 150k. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not updated enough. Wow, Tony. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, 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 but a millionaire, for instance. A millionaire. Can I ask ladies inside this hall? 
you are born again. That's why I want to tell you that your values has changed. You just don't know. I want to ask you, how many of you can buy four? Because sometimes they do four of that to get four million, right? This strand to be complete, especially flowing, that you will not cut. How many of you, I put 20 million in your accounts now, you will buy air of four million in region? Now, let me say this. Now, let me say this to all of us. Do you know that those guys who do it do not necessarily mean they have more money in their account than 20 million when they buy it? They buy it because that is their product. If you're a runs girl and you don't look somehow, nobody will come for you. I mean, there are Langbasa guys that goes for Langbasa girls. But if Ikoyi boys that can afford you will look for you, you also have to look the D. Yeah, you have to look the part. You have to look the part. I, you know, it's you that ask questions. I have to be with you. I, I, was, I was just jelly on my own. Do you understand what I'm saying? You, you, you can't. You can't carry bag. There's a way they smell. Their perfume will, will pay all your groceries and food stuff for a month. And they are not using it to smell good. They are using it so that... To sell market. Do you, do you think people are joking with iPhone 15 Pro? Do you, do you think they would? Don't? I know people... Let me say this to you, that if you buy it... If I buy my wife an iPhone 14, not 15, 13, she will not use it. I'm not... She's here. She will tell me that... I hope you won't mind because Samsung and my Walola and the remaining money investment. You know what I'm saying? Because you understand that we are not living for the now. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that mindset. It doesn't mean that she has a poverty mentality. It just means that she's appropriate because she understands how she works for her money. The way somebody who works for money thinks is different from the way somebody who does not work for it thinks. Let me say this to you. How much clothes does Max Sugarby buy? The Jewish people have a way of living and they, have, they are the richest tribe in the whole of the world. They have generational wealth that transcend your thoughts and imagination. No country in the world that the Jewish people do not rule and reign over. They have money, much more, silent money, not all these things. You people can hate the Igbo men. Igbo people will slap more money than you people because they have a system that works. It's the system. I was talking with a pastor and he told me, he said, he gave a Yoruba man a contract. He made a profit of 50 million. The man came back to the office with a Prado. Prado. He said he gave an Igbo man that same contract. The guy still took Kuba to the place. <laughs> <laughs> what are we saying? How much? How, if, you, if God should dash you the money of Dangote. Just test you for one week. Do you know what you would have done? <laughs> Tell me the kind of clothes Dangote wears that you cannot afford. Can't you afford Dangote's clothes? That was white guinea. Let's go to Kano now. <laughs> you can afford it. it do, see, let's understand that God has called us into diligence. When people work for their money, they spend it differently. I have no problem with an i 14 i 15 i 4 16 18 20 but I want to ask the question, what can it do that makes that expensive? Because we are just crazy people. That thing is stupidly expensive. One point something million and you're a believer, you want to pay that? And there are people in the church who can't afford to pay their house rent. And we are comfortable and say we have wise mentality. No, sir, we care for people and we love them. Let's not let the world tell us what is right. I understand when you are a photographer, a makeup artist. You buy an iPhone 17. If you like, buy 21. Pre-order it. You use it for making money. But you that sit down in your workplace. Oh, you have photo carry. You now walk. No, no, you are not even snapping pictures. You bought an iPhone 15 and just put it down like that. Why not look for reality people and just let them buy a quest for you? 1.5 million. In five years' time, it will do better for you. Stop letting us believe. You see, because there is a way. That's why you need to reach, reach that poor dad. There is a mentality the rich people have. That's why you see them palm slippers they are wearing. You, you have money. You can't go comfortable with your palm slippers. They will say, I'm poor. I changed my life. Church I grew up in, we went to a party. And the food was not ready. They were not giving us the food on the table. And this guy, their parents, their parents were very rich. He stood up and said, where is rice? And then we looked at him. Ah. He would say, we don't have food in our house. He said, they called us here. Because they said there is a party. That means they must be poor. It's their thing to give us food. And they can't look at me and say, I don't have money. And truthfully, they can't look at me. I said, they don't have money. 
He said, if you call for us for the party, then you must feed us. That's the idea. We didn't come here. To, they should bring rice here. <laughs> and those of us who we know they can tell that our parents don't have money, we care quite we're looking at it. <laughs> can you see mindset there? Your mom will even don't embarrass me outside. Don't embarrass me outside. But that one, shoot on rice. Put it on this table. You called us. There are things you must normalize. Be comfortable. Max Gabor wears a red shirt. Whether it is Vubu, whether it's China, nobody knows till tomorrow. I can get you that same clothes in, in Balogo here. You have like 20 of them with 20,000. One, 1,000. Just wearing a red neck. Come on, fly, Lonnie. Listen, what am I trying to say to you is that he has money to buy the chains and the bleeds. Elon Musk, what does he wear? One boot like this. One tibal and walking around. Whether it's that same black, we don't even know. And he can buy Nigeria. I mean, buy you all of you. What is it? <laughs> all right. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, thank you. Sir. I thank think we should you. stop. I think it's important. Let's stop comparing ourselves with the world. We can't win them in their game. Yes. And we are not called to run in their race. That's right, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm very sure we've all been blessed today and um, we've all learned.